the fans the truth is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music. Deeper than music. The core of you, the fans the truth is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest. It's deeper than music. Deeper than music. Hello out there, this is Mark Furious Nias of Deeper Than Music Radio. Behind every great song, there's an even greater story. I'd like to give a shout out to people listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and the other podcasting platforms that we're podcasted on. Um, like I said, Deeper Than Music is a, a show where we showcase great artists and get their story behind the music um today we have a very special guest uh this woman is part of a group uh april in the velvet room she has performed alongside legends such as stevie wonder babyface rod stewart and many others her new single tears are gone which will showcase recently made the top 40 list on buzzfeed ladies and gentlemen we have april doyle of the velvet room here on deeper than music radio uh, April, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Thank I'm you for doing, having me. Not a problem. Thank you for being on the show. I just want to say, uh, Babyface and Stevie Wonder, they're, they're top on my list. I mean, that must be an honor to perform with like legendary and great artists like that. Yeah, it's it, well, I, we were performing with them like in the same like at the same event. I I wish that I could tell you I was on the exact stage with him, but we were performing like at the same time and have worked and work with the same people. I actually yeah. some of my songs are actually graced by some of the people that work with him all the time. So, kind of a you know it's a small world. The, when you find out that everybody knows everybody almost in this in this industry. It's uh, and they're all amazing. They're all amazing, and I, I'm just uh, stunned to be working with the people I'm working with. Yeah, to even be in that space is just still like you got to be in awe. Just a uh, man. Definitely, definitely. So, um, my first question is, uh, who is uh, April Doyle in the Velvet Room? Can you give us a description of the sound and what you're bringing to music? Yeah, the uh, the the this this whole project has been very interesting in the way that it was it was. Uh, brought to life so to speak um it started out as a, i run one of the top uh, corporate show bands in the u.s and we do like all very high-end private events and that band's called hot chile hot chile productions and um you know i worked with kevin flornoy who is the musical um director and he had done some some shows with us disgraced our stage and then I wanted to do some, like, instead of like my, we call it sort of like day job music, as we tailor these events. And I, I wanted to, I was getting, you know, more and more the urge to, to reach out and do my own thing, like my own expression. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Kevin, you know, said, well, let's, let's do this. So I'm the, it just started out with me wanting to record some classic tunes, like, I mean, classic, like, Nancy Wilson, um, some of the old, uh, uh, there, I mean, there was, um, Sabor a Mi. There was some stuff that, uh, LaBelle, uh, that's a song that Sting did. I was doing kind of an international thing with just these songs that I loved. And then we started writing and it sort of kind of, uh, turned into another deal. And I would say that what we are now is sort of a, a really beautiful like melange of like kind of jazz with neo soul with a little bit of funk a little bit of you know r&b mm -hmm. it's sort of like um you know adult contemporary used to be like a bad word and now it's <laughs> you know now yeah. it's it's sort of grown into something very cool because it, it it like accepts all these different um vibes so um i used to not like that that terminology but everyone's like man this is great you're you know because i it's not full neo soul. It's like sophisticated neo soul because it's okay. got the ja jazz aspect to it and okay. some some of the classic aspects. So in the Velvet Room, you never know who's going to be at any given show. Like we we have, I feature people in the band because they're all, you know, Hollywood royalty, 
and I let them I let them either sing or solo or and then we have some people you know that will sit in with us as well we have some um I'm afraid to mention names right now because I don't know, you know, schedules change in this business, but we're going to be at Vibrato in uh, Bel Air on uh, March 8th. And we have some pretty major people that are saying they might be able to come and sit in with us. So uh, that's, you never know. I always say you never know who's going to be in the velvet room. And I love that because I like to feature different, you know, brilliant artists and i think that makes the show and even dancers i've got a um my choreographer is one of the uh main guys I'm dancing with stars he will come in and do like a featured dance number and just kill everybody and leave you know like they, nobody <laughs> expects it yeah so it's a beautiful thing it's a very interesting show and i like i like how you say the velvet room i remember um it kind of reminds me of uh janet jackson's i think it's a 1988 1998 album around that time period the velvet rope like we all have the need yep. to feel special the velvet rope yeah and you hear you have the velvet room I, I like to play on that um so so you mentioned hot chile productions with the hot chile productions you got to perform for some some very established people hugh hefter to name a few um, oh that was that was quite a birthday party let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could only imagine right <laughs> yeah that was that was a, a little uh, reality tv show right there <laughs> you know and um another question that i had um when did you know you wanted to perform and do music was this at an early age you know i, w- I was my plan was you know, famous, famous plans, how they can go sideways. I was, uh, you know, pursuing acting and I had done a lot of other things. I had done some modeling. I had done some, you know, then I started uh, doing makeup and styling and, uh, and I was acting and doing, I was doing theater. I was really wanting to do theater. And then somebody just invited me to this, this get together of this band. They said, do you sing? And I'm like, yeah, I sing. Well, then all of a sudden, this band took off, and we were working literally like 25, 27 shows a month. Wow. And so I was like, I didn't have time for anything else. So like the music just kind of took over, it took the forefront, and there I was, and just kind of stayed with it. You know, I I still love all these other aspects of the entertainment industry, and I, I dabble in them whenever I can, but music has definitely been the forefront for quite a few years. And you also mentioned, um, I know that you're also known as a makeup artist as well, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so th- yeah. I was doing a, um, I was modeling for Paul Mitchell and some of the other uh, companies, and I was uh, very good friends with the main photographer who had this insane gig. He was doing everybody from all the major hair companies, all the ads, all that. They so when I was when I friended the, with this photographer I was all of a sudden I had this amazing roster of ads and things and it's a lot easier to find a model than a makeup artist so I, I had done some ads for Paul Mitchell and then all of a sudden I was like the main makeup artist for these these ads and promotion so it was kind of a, a more selective gig and I kind of st- started doing a lot of makeup and then that went to the wayside when I was traveling all over the place with the band yeah, so, I imagine um, 20, 27 gigs a month. Yeah, you that must be. That was a lot, and it was. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to do that again. I like kind of sitting back now and like really planning and finessing out a show. You know, yeah. with who's going to be on it, what's the set list? It's got to be just this beautiful set list, and will I have dancers come in? Who's going to be featured? So it's 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 actually lovely to like sit and work on this. Like who's going to show up on these gigs and and grace the stage you know with us and so it's it's um it's it's an honor and um you mentioned like neo soul jazz and funk all these different elements who influences you you creatively musically like what artists inspire you or your influences that's a loaded question (laughs) and and if you have three hours and a bottle of honey jack we can really like get (laughs) you know (laughs) yeah uh everybody from uh, you know uh the people that i'm like sick for uh stokely uh eric badu okay um and then randomly uh steely dan 
just the way they write songs. There's like two songs together. You will hear another entire song playing. Like if you don't have trained ears and you're listening to the radio, it sounds like a kind of a rock pop song. But if you are a musician and you really hear what they're doing, you're just like, oh my God, how did they put that together? Um, I started, you know, as my ears started and started, uh, just getting as I got smarter as a musician, going you know with more uh, time and 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 time spent and performance etc. under my belt, I started you know learning and hearing differently, which was a, a cool thing too. So I started appreciating certain artists that I had never really liked. I I never had any feeling for Steely Dan in the past, and then I granted my music does them. I'm just using them as an example of. You know, when you get a little smarter and you learn more, then you start to really understand certain artists. Yeah. But um, really, some of the new people that are out are real cool too. The um, I like her. I like um, I'm gonna blank on. I, I should have written this down. So now you're. <laughs> you, I knew you were gonna ask me something that I would not be able to think of all the answers. Uh, um, a- there's just a lot of really cool new artists out there that are um. A lot of them are artists. That's what's nice. It's not yeah. just, you know, this artificial track and this, you know, and, and granted, there's always going to be that deal in the industry and it there's a place for it. Yeah. Dance music and stuff can be more synthetic, but um, there's a lot more artists out there playing, like sitting down and playing guitar, playing the piano. And it seems like a lot of the tracks are more simple, but there's kind of a beauty in that. You know, it's interesting the way the sound of music mutates sort of as it kind of as time goes on yeah yeah and you're right like um i think somebody did uh they did like a um this is like one track but they blended a lot of popular music today and the the bpm was the same the melodies were the same um and like you said it's it's, it's how it's morphed into something simple but then also mm-hmm. when you when you mention like artist artists it gives them room to play around with, you know, when they're doing live shows and which is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, speaking of music, I have your song, uh, queued up tears are gone. Can you give us the story behind this song before we, we play it? Yeah. I, you know, the, the story, I, I wish I had like a really juicy <laughs> specific story to tell you about like something that happened but th- this song is sort of the accumulation of a lot of different situations in my life and other people's lives that you know that I knew and cared for and I would hear them talking and, and I just thought about how sometimes in your life you get to the point after experiencing a lot of things relationships people ups downs you know upset uh, great things happening and you get to a point sometimes where you're just done like your your tears are gone Mm. and and you and i i got to this point to where i thought you know i I feel kind of hopeful i i'm not feeling like i'm lost in the in the black hole anymore of things i i feel like my tears are gone and and it's okay like i can move forward so it's not like a, a a desperate feeling that i got from writing this song i got sort of a hopeful feeling from it Okay, so here we go. We have the story behind the song of Tears Are Gone here. A special guest, April Doyle of April in the Velvet Room here on Deeper Than Music Radio. This is Marquivis Furious Nias, and you're listening to Deeper Than Music Radio. We said goodbye, but here we are again. I think that we can make it if we try it as friends. Because the way it used to be. It just had to end And all my tears are gone We fight to see Through the stormy clouds Not doing very well It's so hard to break all habits And make things right As far as I can tell You tell me you love me As you're walking away So what does that mean When you say it that way We say goodbye But here we are again I think that we can make it If we try 
tried as friends Cause the way we used to be It just had to end And all my tears are gone It used to feel like broken glass Too many scars left from careless words But now looking back, so much time has passed I hope it's taught us something And maybe now we can be A story with a happy ending We said goodbye but here we are again I think that we make it if we tried as friends go the way things used to be it just had to end and all my tears were gone looking back on all the years looking back so many tears are gone moving on we said goodbye but here we are again I think that we can make it if we tried as friends cause the way things used to be it just had to end and all my tears are gone we said goodbye Tried as friends Cause the way things used to be It just had to end We said goodbye And here we are again There's got to be a reason Can we try it out as friends Cause the way things used to be We knew it had to end And all my tears are gone ladies and gentlemen april doyle of april and the velvet room i love that song it's like really smooth and um man thank you it's a little different from the vibe that we discussed that the project is is kind of about but um we have some movie interest in this song and um also the the background vocals and arrangement were done by kevin dorsey who was um michael jackson's background like vocal arranger for like 25 years wow and al schmidt is like grammy award winning royalty he mixed this and he's one of these guys that if he doesn't like the song he just you can't you can't pay him to do it he has to be he has to have a feeling for the project or he won't work on it Mm -hmm. so there's some very uh there's some very awesome things going on with this song so i appreciate you uh I appreciate what you said about it. No, and actually, I mean, for to, for it to be the top forty list on BuzzFeed, that in itself, and I could see like it having uh, a movie placement. It's a very no, very smooth and very. It's very engaging. Like I was engaged. The arrangements, the uh, the strings, piano, everything about it was just. You just can't you can't help but be engaged in the song. Thanks, uh, uh, you know, and there's nothing like live strings, you know. Oh yeah, I, I, I love it. Love it. Just yeah. lends that different feeling. That, uh... and that's one thing I really love about um uh, one of my favorite artists. And people get like, "Wow, you really like this guy?" I love Sting. I, he's a uh, from the songwriter. And one thing that I love that he does is like he'll in concert he'll break it down. You know, he may jazz it up or uh, that album he had where he it was like an orchestra. It was in uh, Germany, but the mm-hmm. whole album is his songs. But it, it was orchestra with an orchestra and i thought yeah. that was really cool i mean you mentioned like St- stevie wonder they uh have on youtube him 
and Stevie Wonder's thing performing fragile and Stevie Wonder plays his harmonica I'm like man that is so awesome yeah that's that that kind of stuff is epic that those kind of performances are truly epic they're yeah I I love Sting that's what I did the, on the album I did the French version of La Belle Dame that he did wow and um yeah that was awesome to do that and that's how um uh, uh, Brent Fisher, I don't know if you know who that is. You know who Claire Fisher is, who did all the strings for everybody from Natalie Cole to Tony, Tony, Tony to any. Anyway, he's uh, he and his son Brent. Uh, Brent did the string arrangement on my on the Sting song that I did, La Belle in French, and wow. they're going to submit that to the Latin Grammys, and I'm just crossing my fingers for wow. that. Wow! Congratulations yeah. on that. That's that's Thank epic you. right there too. Yeah, it's again to work with this level of people is is I uh, I mean it it that's kind of my deal. it's like I don't want to do I don't want to like do anything like halfway. Yeah. I'm kind of like over the top kind of person, so this has been awe inspiring. But like, yes, this is a beautiful thing. This is so great to be, you know, have th- have them put their touch on on my deal. I wanted to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my friends said, because um, I'm, I'm a music artist as well, but I, you know, I, I in the beginning, I wasn't classically trained or anything like that. And one of my friends told me and mentor said that to the and I, I found this so to be so surprising. He told me um, like people that are classically trained, it's hard for them to like create on their own. Um, some of them, it can't they can do it, but it's a challenge. And I wanted to ask going from. um doing like you said corporate events and things like that to to want to venture out and do your own thing and create your own sound was there any challenge or was it an easy transition no because i've I've, well, I've always been you know just well, well actually what's interesting is i'm i'm actually I, it's very funny to say this but i'm part of hip-hop culture like i was like so there when hip hop was born and just I've just been into uh, hip hop R&B just funk that's been my thing for so long so it's kind of like the stuff that I was doing as as I called my day job music was completely not completely but mostly sideways from what I was really into and um, so it's uh, I, I didn't feel that I just kind of I m- marketing is a uh it's, it's I'm really good at marketing like I, I that's just my one of my fortes so I know how to pull myself out of my preference to think about what would corporate America want for this event what does Mercedes you know Mercedes takes their top sellers to Hawaii to say thank you and we're the, the band on the last night what so I find out what age range they are are they is it mostly men mostly women are they couples and then i i'm i've learned i've become really good at, at how at how to write a great set list mm-hmm. with a good flow for you know after finding out what type of what age range you know is this again mostly men mostly women just so there, there's a way to kind of you know actually it's that left brain right brain thing i mean a lot of artists just have no business sense at all yeah and that's the um, challenge yeah mm-hmm. agreed yeah so i've been lucky enough to have a little bit of both so i've been able to market um or my corporate music and band very well and of course i've had a lot of help from a lot of amazing talent as well i'm definitely not going to say this is all me but i sort of am an icebreaker with this and then i have a lot of support and that's from pretty... the mu- oh i'm sorry go ahead no sorry i was just saying from the musicians and uh they're all the one thing about this corporate situation is it's it's not like a bunch of just regular guys these are all guys that that the drummer was you know parliament funkadelic's drummer wow, wow. the yeah the guitar player went was on tour with stacy Lattisaw and troop and you know so all my you know, all my funk guys that i love um and the, i could go on for days about this group the the um the lead the, one of the lead singers right now just got off tour with uh, jennifer lopez and one of the girls was on tour with taylor swift and uh, they're all like they're like major major talent so it's not just like you know 
like singers from college or they're these are this is like hollywood royalty as i call them yeah and i like and so, i like that you mentioned stokely you you mentioned troop like these are groups that you know that you really have to love the 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 music in order to know these people like troop i mean you just brought me back just by saying that group's name oh yeah no i mean we could talk about steve errington and we could talk about I can go on for days about this stuff. This I love old school funk and the beginning of hip hop and all that. Just love it. So you mentioned like who were your favorite hip hop artists? Uh, just out of curiosity, who was my favorite? You know, it was I I there I like some people now that I didn't like. I love Tupac, mm -hmm. I, and I don't like people that just are blowing a lot of hot air. Yeah, I mean, like you know, people that are just talking about you know. I won't. I won't mention that stuff on this lovely interview. But, <laughs> uh, love Tupac. I know he he went a little sideways sometimes, but um, who else? Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, Heavy D, man. Oh Heavy my D goodness, was Heavy a, D. Yes. No, Heavy D had a had a flow, had a tone, had a. Yes. He was so good, and you know who else was great? And I don't even know the guy. I only know that his name was Tony. But the guy that Prince had in NPG, his name was Tony, and he had a big, beautiful, deep voice, and he had a flow, like an unbelievable just. And I, I don't know who, I don't know what happened to him. All I know is that his first name was Tony, and I'm like, I don't know. He never, I, I won't say that he didn't have his own career because it could have been a different name or, you know, the, the people that were in the Prince camp. That though, that's everyone's got their own interesting personal story about that yeah so i don't know if he ever continued or i would love to know who he is but um who else uh dana dane i mean oh, you yeah, gotta dana you gotta love yes. dana dane yeah yes yes um who else oh, i could go oh, ice cube love ice cube love the b-sides b-sides ice cube oh the money uh, yeah yeah that's money <laughs> oh my money <laughs> Oh my God! You like mentioning this stuff that you have to be in the. You have to know the no. I remember the B side album. Oh my goodness! I know. So I'm not making any sense with my project, right? <laughs> no, because I never like. I can't admit when you said hip hop, and then you just started naming people, and I'm like, yep. these are people that you don't hear about every day. Like, no, I, I'm. I'm. That's why my friends usually call me Mocha. I mean, I'm very white, but they call me Mocha. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. So uh, with the Velvet the Velvet Room, we played uh, the song. Could you give us a rundown of your, your guys' catalog and like shows? <clears throat> of the the from the people that were on the the recording. Uh, or actually, or, I know that we have a singer. Are you guys working on an album EP? Or? Oh, the album. Okay, the album is done. Uh, what we've been doing is just uh, I've been taking direction from a, a very finessed social media company mm -hmm. and um, I have a publicist and a person who is saying you have to because this was kind of an interesting just jump in the fire project um, I, I, I'm building up my uh, my social media and, and letting people know I'm alive out there okay. uh, they know that I'm alive in these other aspects of music but for this project we're just working on uh, getting that going, and um, uh, the response has been great. But uh, you know, until you have a certain number of likes on your pages, um, people think you're irrelevant. So um, it kind of doesn't have anything to do with the art, unfortunately. But it's just the reality of the industry right now. So um, we are, are we're actually dropping the. We're gonna. I'm not sure if we're gonna drop the whole album on March 8th. At this show at uh, Vibrato in Bel Air, California, or uh, what the plan is, I'm kind of being directed because this is, uh, you know, a, a different thing for me. Yeah, and you're right. Unfortunately, with like social media, I mean, the new wave, uh, it's all about with certain people. It's all like somebody was saying. Um, I actually had an interview, and the guy was like, you know, they dis sometimes they disregard good music or somebody's popular because they took a good picture. <laughs> I? No, I know. Or how about the people that that? I mean, there there's people on um, Instagram or Facebook or whatever. They they don't they don't do anything. They put out a video that that was funny or interesting 
or whatever, and then they get three million views, and then they get offered money. Oh yeah, you know, I oh, mean, yeah. it's like it does. It's it's, kinda, it's a crazy, crazy machine. Because you, but um, like you mentioned, Stokely, uh, Mint Condition. I mean, great band, but I just feel mm. like they never got their fully just due, and, and just musicians. Uh, Agreed, agreed. And then the, I, I was at one of their first concerts where they started saying, "Hey, we're, we got, we're, we don't have a record de- record deal anymore. Please support us. Uh, go online and like a like our page." They were asking for you know support in regards to the social media deal. I mean, and you know, there's a whole bunch of artists that's that were doing that. I mean. You know, Prince did it and put Slave on his cheek, and oh, yeah, you know yeah, everybody. Yeah. People, there's story for stories for days about people being unhappy with their record deals, but um, it's very different now. Um, I, I don't, I don't like it actually. To be <laughs> honest, to be honest, but I yeah. it didn't. You know, I just thought, well, I'm going to do this project anyway, and the people that I'm working with that that made it come to life with me. Are, I'm so thrilled to be working with them and have them, you know, like, wow, this to, to have the, to have something like this completed. Like my album is complete. We've actually um, recorded some other songs even past the album. It's just um, finding the right time and what I'm being um, directed to h- how to, you know, drop all this stuff. We have uh, videos shot. Uh, we have a video for Tears Are Gone. We have two other videos. I mean, like, there's a lot of um, really solid, great stuff that's it's just waiting to be, you know, released. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we just finished a Christmas song, actually, that that was being considered. That's going to be considered for another uh, movie, for oh, ne- wow. a Christmas movie next year. So I wanted to get that done. So I'm trying to... You know, reach out and and engage in a lot of different aspects with this project. That's that's pretty cool, pretty awesome. I wanted to ask, since you, I mean, you mastered, and everybody says like I have the book, this business of music, and it's called the music business. Um, it seems like you understand marketing, which most people marketing is either the difference between your product, people being aware of your product, or people not knowing who you are, especially in this land of every anybody can be a musician and do music. I want yeah. to ask, what has been your biggest challenge in your career? I'd say my biggest challenge has been my search for uh, perfection. Mm. I think that has held me back the most um, instead of just diving in when I should have, which would have been, I don't know how many years ago I would have, you know, probably I would have done all this sooner then later um you know instead of the, uh, giving it as much energy as the whole corporate deal but i was um i think just a little just my endless search for perfection and and thinking that oh these aren't the right people i just kept giving myself reasons to not dive in so mm-hmm. that's another reason why this has been such a uh a denouement, which is an interesting word, an unraveling. But they it's, they use that in literary terms, like when the story unravels. Like I just kind of like let everything go and went, let's do this and let's finish it. So it's been really great to have this done on a lot of different levels. So no matter where this goes, whatever happens with it, I I'm I feel like this. The sense of completion and everything is is great, and to have worked with these people that I'm working with, people that you know work worked with Michael Jackson and are still doing stuff with you know all kinds of headliners, and uh, it's those are the people that I want to work with, and to have them want to work on my project, and when I see that I have a new song I just finished, and everybody was in the studio, like this Grammy Award winning mixer was standing there bobbing his head, he goes, man, I could listen to this all day. To hear something like that from somebody that his whole life has been with the top, the cream of the crop, to hear that, it's like, it's like water in the desert. You're like, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, so it's... Um, it's been uh, a pat on the back in a lot of different ways. Yeah, and to have like people that have been industry, like you said, in the industry, and then they're like, "Look, 
if I don't like it, if if it doesn't, I, like what Quincy Jones, uh, he, I heard him say this frequently. Frequently, he's like, if it doesn't give you the goosebumps, how's it gonna give every, anybody else the goosebumps? And then yep. to have somebody like that, like, look, I'm not gonna work. W- I'm not gonna work with you unless I feel it. To have them work with you and create that that in itself is is, is saying something, which is which is awesome. Um, yeah, agreed. That Al Schmidt that was mixing this stuff. It's like he. Um, Kevin Flournoy, the musical director who I told you about, he's he has worked with everybody from uh, Babyface, and he's the musical director for Pointer Sisters, and he works with Shaka Khan and, and a lot of people. And he went to Al Schmidt and said, can you mix this for us, these songs? And he was kind of sitting there waiting for Al to say yay or nay. Like, you know, if, if Al didn't like it, he he he's usually very polite, but he'll say, uh, no, I don't have the time to do this. So when he was like, yeah, I'd love to work on these songs. Kevin and I were both like slapping each other five, like awesome. You know, like this is, uh, that's a, that's a big pat on the back, like a big nod that he was loving working on the the music. So we recorded it at the best studios. We were at Westlake. We were in the studio that Michael Jackson did. Michael, yeah. When you said Westlake, I'm like thriller, Mm -hmm. bad, off the wall. Yep. Wow. Yep. It's just a good vibe in there, you know? (laughs) And then we were at the village in uh, Santa Monica, and we were at some other cool places in, down. And uh, I'm blanking on the other. We we I got taken around. I'm I'm like I trust you. Let's go. Let's do this. And so I was uh, in a, a handful of beautiful, beautiful studios in L.A. And I'm from L.A., but I've lived in San Diego since grade school. So. Oh, okay, I'm a um, ex Navy vet. I uh, used to live in um, Bonita. El Cajon, La Mesa. Just spend spend some time in God's country. <laughs> we li- we lived in Benita when I was in in high school for one year. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, that was actually it was actually pretty back there. It was kind of like 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 horse country. It looked like you know a lot of people had horses and stuff. They had they had like space back there. I don't know what it's like now, but um, and it was pretty back in the day. Yeah, I, I think I, I lived there in like it was like. 2000 yeah 2000 till 2003 lived out that uh-huh. way so i imagine it hopefully it looks the same or it looks a lot different right yeah i don't know i haven't uh, haven't been uh in that area in quite a while so i wanted to um like as with all my great interviews they go by so fast and then in the last seven minutes um i wanted to ask two questions and then after the two questions shameless promotion time my first question is after like everything is said and done how would you want your your musical legacy to be remembered i I would just like and i don't know if this is something that will even come across i mean i guess you know it depends on the the avid listener some listeners just they don't really care what's going on under the underwater so to speak they just like the what they're hearing on top of everything, they just like the sound. Some people want to dig in and see who's playing on this, who you know, who's involved. And um, I, I, I would, I would just like people to know that we we did something really beautiful, like with the the best people in the business. Mm-hmm. I would just like people to appreciate that the way I appreciate it. It's kind of like I want them to appreciate these people the way I'm appreciating them. So. I, I just feel like I'm blessed to be able to have pulled all this together with all these, with all this talent, and uh, I, I guess I have to try give myself a little nod, or they they wouldn't have allowed themselves to be, be drawn into this if I didn't have something worth giving their time and attention to, you know. So uh, that's been uh, really. Uh, uh, yeah, see, I get I get tongue tied when it comes to focus on myself but um (laughs) it's been just uh really awe-inspiring to know that they are excited and want to work on something that i created yeah that's what i'm trying to say now when you have like legendary people that they grant your music worthy of their time and their their expertise exactly Um, my next question is what does music mean to you it means um, expression. It means, you know, it's it's funny. Uh, 
a lot of the like the old funk stuff that we were talking about when i hear those songs i i say the, those songs are like my old friends you know um it, it's interesting the way that i feel about that stuff and and music has changed so dramatically i know a lot of people don't even might not even understand what you're listening to you know if it's not because the, the a lot of the current for so many years things have been synthetic that's kind of the way i describe it mm-hmm. um it seems like it's going back to real um instrumentation but um uh, I, I don't know I, again I, I think it's just expression you know it's kind of like it, it, there's a feeling I have I have feelings from certain songs as I'm sure so many people do and sometimes it's soothing and sometimes it's makes you want to get up and dance and sometimes it puts you in a you know makes you sad or but um that's the way that I, I, I would I, I'd like to say something more strategic <laughs> and amazing but it just seems like that's the reality of it for me yeah no i mean well, well said i mean music is is universal i mean you think about it if there was no music in movies it'd be it wouldn't be as interesting or engaging have you seen that footage where they show this they, there's a little um it was a little thing on uh, online like not maybe it was a like a little short but they were showing these classic um, like footage from like epic movies and they show the scene like there was a scene from Star Wars and they showed it with music and without oh, completely this- oh it's great Com- there, yeah and they, they do it with like there's a whole bunch of scenes that they've chosen I mean epic scenes that have been like iconic that people have you know uh, like some of the uh, what the Godfather or you know like <laughs> that when there's no music it's it's like the music adds so much emotion and feeling it it really does it's like it's you don't realize how much it adds to your your visual experience yeah but it's yeah. it's it's amazing what it adds and the feeling it can bring and the, and the tone it can bring the mood it can bring. It's amazing. And uh, we have two more minutes. And again, thank you for taking the time to uh, be on the show and share the story behind your your great music and, and like the opportunities that are at hand for you. I see I see nothing but big things for you in the Velvet Room. Where can people hear more of your music and follow you? Like it's, this is shameless promotion time. Well, yeah, it's it's um. Uh, on Facebook, it's April and the Velvet Room, and on Instagram, April and the Velvet Room. And the links, the videos are uh, there's uh, one video on there now for Tears Are Gone, and then that's there's also a link to uh, YouTube, and there's one other that I'm I'm sorry I don't have it right in front of me, but it's all on the uh, Instagram and Facebook, the other links to uh where we where we're going to be playing the uh, the videos etc and telling when when we're going to drop more um more music okay well ladies and gentlemen uh you heard it here april doyle of april in the velvet room and we also shared um a great song that i'm pretty sure we're going to hear on on the on a movie um tears are gone and again, April, thank you for your time and just sharing your your great story of your musical journey. And uh, I see nothing but nothing but um big things for you in the Velvet Room, uh, a movie placement definitely for sure. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, and I really enjoyed talking to you about all this. This is I appreciate it. Not a problem. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are closing out another great episode of Deeper Than Music with special guest April Doyle of April in the Velvet Room. Deeper Than Music. The core of you. The fans that deeper truth. than music. It's deeper than music. The core of you. The fans that the truth is. The truth is. The truth is. It's deeper than music. Simply the truth is the core of you. The fans the truth is deeper than you. The core of you. The fans the truth is the latest and newest.